All right, we got 15 minutes, so let's do this NXT show here. J- uh, Vic Joseph, by the way, did commentary here tonight, so no Tom Phillips. Don't know where he was. No, I think we had di- I think it's a, it's a replacement because, um, um, you know, Tom Phillips is already doing Raw, and Vic, Vic Joseph wasn't doing much of anything. We have Danny Birch versus Karrion Cross, and Birch attacked him at the bell, didn't last long. Cross destroys this guy. Birch makes a quick comeback, and then Cross drops this dude right on his head with two of the Doomsday Saitos, chokes him out, gets the win. The match was fun. Cross looked like a killer. That's the whole goal. And then Keith Lee comes out with a contract, and he says, calls him a little bitch, said he begged and pleaded with Regal, I will not touch you until takeover if you give me this match. He says the contract has Regal's signature and his on it. He gives it to Scarlet. Scarlet brings it to Cross. Cross signs. Scarlet brings it back. Keith Lee goes to make sure that he signed it. And when he opens the contract, a gigantic fireball blows into his face. He's screaming. The medics come out. They take him all the way to the ambulance. This was like the greatest contract signing on a WWE show in I don't even know how long. There was nothing boring about it. There was nothing cliche about it. It was totally different. I like this. I thought it was a great angle. I really love the presentation of Cross. I mean, he's, he, he's, he's presented as something completely different. He's got a great look. I mean that's the one thing, and not not just like, not not like he's tall and has a good physique. He's that that's he does have that, but I mean just the way he looks, his eyes and everything like that. Like he carries himself like a superstar. You know, I mean that's that's the one thing he does so well, and the way he wrestles. I mean it's limited, it's kept short, but it's, it, it's what it is. Like it's like he is a a technical destroyer. It it's it it's you know I don't know that it that you know if he did. Um, a, a longer match that it would work out as well. So, I mean, I think the the presentation of him and his work in this presentation is is really good. And the act with Scarlet, the ring entrance, the whole bit, re, you know, um, very very strong. He, he comes off as a legit main event guy. I mean, big time. We have Drake. Guy. Drake Maverick, Killian Dane goes to a DQ, and the undisputed era runs in. And they destroy both guys. Adam Cole cuts an angry promo on uh, Pat McAfee. I know you're watching, he says. I'm the longest reigning NXT champion. You have no idea what you got yourself into. I want you to walk down that ramp next week, get in the ring. I'm going to look you in the eyes and tell you I'm going to whip your ass. So that was the big big promo, and it's Pat McAfee, Adam Cole, I guess having a, a confrontation next week. Right, next week to build to their match to take over. Which will be a real interesting test of Adam Cole and the Pat McAfee. She did a pr- promo about the three-way later on tonight. And then Santos, Escobar, and Tyler Breeze. There's nothing wrong with the wrestling in the match, but Tyler makes a comeback. Legato Del Fantasma hits the ring. Tyler beats him up. Fantasma hits his finish for the pin. I mean, it's by the numbers, cookie cutter. We've seen it a million times on WWE TV. And Escobar then, pretty much dominated the match, other than the one comeback at the end. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was fine. I mean, they're they're setting up, um, you know, Breeze and Fandango and Scott on the next week's show against, um, you know, the, the Legado del Fantasma, which will then break off into Scott against uh, Santos Escobar for the cruiserweight title. Had a Dakota Kai video package talking about TakeOver. Ridge Holland video package. He's coming back next week. Match against Johnny Gargano. What is the update on Gargano? Um, Probably. Let me just see if there is an update. Hold on. Um, okay, so I don't have any updates. So, so okay, so this okay next week's show was taped tonight after this show that aired, not live, but on a few hour tape delay. So they taped the Gargano and and um, and uh, uh, Rich Holland match. The winner goes to the takeover um, ladder match. During the match, Gargano got dropped on his head and was injured, and they had to stop the match and it was stopped for several minutes. And I guess Gargano was okay to the point that they went in there and they just, luckily it was a taped show. If it was a live show, it would have been, you know, 
it had been a bad situation. They they just taped the whole match from the start. So all the stuff that I just told you, the dropping on the head and everything, I doubt we will see any of it. Um, you know, certainly not. You know, they just did. They just did a new match. The fact that that they could do a, a new match is a good sign because obviously, if he needed to be rushed to the hospital, they couldn't do that. If he hurt his neck really, really bad, they couldn't do that. Um, I don't know that Johnny Gargano won, but I could not imagine any other finish because in a ladder match at Takeover, who do you want in the ladder match, Johnny Gargano and Ridge Holland? So they anyway, they did that, and then I guess they were going to check him out afterwards. But it's it's still, you know, on on the on the one hand, it sounds good that he wrestled. On the other hand, it sounds scary that he wrestled because if you're out and unable to, you know whatever for after being dropped on your head for a long time even if you feel like you can do it um it may be very dangerous to do it and i mean i know that that that's the wrestler's always gonna gonna want to do it i mean it's just a question of is it is it safe and again not having seen it i i guess it's not fair to criticize it so um Hopefully everything's kosher and he's fine and 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 it was just a minor thing. But I'm still, you know, it, it, again, if I had 100 percent faith in 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 the doctors and everything like that, um, I would just say, you know, hey, he wrestled, everything's cool. But I don't. There's too many examples, so I I'm certainly concerned. Mia Yim beat Indy Hartwell. Mia did a promo before the match saying that Keith had been taken to the hospital. But it appears he has no lasting injuries and is going to be okay. So, Indy Hartwell has a great look, but she's really green when it comes to like, um, you know, she was not ready ropes. for national TV. No, 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 and it was it showed here. Now, having said that, I thought Mia Yim was really good in this match. She's coming along like I remember. You know, I've, obviously Mia Yim's been in the spotlight between between TNA and this for years and years and years, and she has improved considerably um she's a real she she came off looking like a real pro in there with someone who uh needed to be carried and um you know um i think indy hartwell again the thing is is, is the standards for the women is, are a lot lower than the guys there's all kinds of guys who are crisp and everything like that whereas with women it's more limited so you're gonna have stuff like this and you know you see it on aew too you know you're gonna have that tentativeness and the running the ropes things and and you know timing things that happen that you don't see as much in men's matches but um she's green but but like i she she did have a cool look and so i think that um you know i can see why they signed her put it that way had a finn balor promo and then clips of triple h challenging pat mcafee on behalf of adam cole and then Bronson Reed and Damian Priest, which I really liked because they had a fun match, two big dudes. Yeah, and real good match. It, at the end, we had Reed going for his big splash, but Priest moved. Priest goes for his finish, and Reed rolls him up and pins him. So they're just starting to do this Bronson Reed push. I don't think anybody believes he's going to win the ladder match. So he really was the guy who needed the win tonight. And I figure that Priest is probably going to win the North American title. That's right? funny. I, I thought the exact. The I thought the exact. As soon as I saw that pin, I thought, "Oh, Priest is probably going to win the title." Um, and and you know what? And he probably of the guys, he probably should. It's new. Um, they've been you know kind of teasing, pushing him. He probably needs the push. The one thing on the the match was, I thought Bronson Reed was very good in this match, and he is a talented guy. I mean, and who who really. Only in the last couple of weeks has really been getting a real shot in NXT. Um, you know, because a big guy like he knows how to work for that like five foot nine, three hundred and fifteen pound guy. He's a good worker, um, and um, his, his so and and Priest is very athletic. I mean, the the one knock on Priest is that he is a lot older than people think he is, and um, that's the one thing. I mean, it's like he's certainly got size and great voice and great look and and cool moves uh, but you know i don't say time's running out on him but but they can't sleep on him for too long either uh but as far as um the, the one spot when the one spot that wasn't good was when he did the splash and priest was supposed to move he hit priest 
Priest didn't move enough, and and he he hit him, and then it was kind of like because of the match layout, they couldn't improvise. You know, it was just like it's time to work right to the finish. So it's like he hits Priest. Priest sells it like he was not hit. The announcer is like in going through the replay. You know, had to do this. Well, he hit him, but you know he didn't get all of it. Which you know he didn't because he was supposed to miss. He didn't get all of it, but he he was supposed to get none of it. We got a Neo Shirai promo, and then Aaliyah and Mercedes Martinez versus Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter. Three green women and Mercedes Martinez, and Mercedes did her best to hold this match together, and it was not a disaster. I mean, Mercedes is really good, and they beat on Caden for a while. Casey made a comeback, tried the Hurricane Run, and Mercedes hit her with the air raid crash and got the pin. So Rhea Ripley hits the ring afterwards, goes after Mercedes. Aaliyah was supposed to break it up, but she accidentally hit her own partner. And it wasn't like a plan. It was like she forgot who her partner was. So she had to do it again. And this time she hit Rhea. And then Shotzi she, ran did, did, down. Did she, did, she, did she chop block her? I don't know what she did, but the first time she missed her. Yeah, and then I, thought it was, it was, I thought it was supposed to be a chop block, yeah. Shotzi ran down to make the save. So, so I guess she, that's a tag match for next week. Okay, so the reason Shotzi ran in in tennis shoes and shorts is because all her gear got stolen because of the great, in both in real life and in fiction, there's a lot of crime in Florida these days. And so in real, she had a real life, her, her, her car was stolen with her gear. So she had to go in there and with just her regular clothes. We had another at home with the Garganos where Johnny's upset he has to face Ridge Holland next week. She should just be in a ladder match the entire time. Vows to qualify, become a two-time North American champion. We had more Thatch's Thatch can, where he explained how he was winning a few weeks ago, but he did not address how he lost. So next week, which, by the way, is unopposed, I thought they'd have a much bigger show than this. It's Legato Del well, it's Fantasma sort, it's, it's, versus... It's, it's, it's sort of unopposed, but AEW's putting the putting pay-per-view on head-to-head. So AEW's, you know... They're... Well, yes, they're putting a pay-per-view on YouTube, but as far as, like, if you turn on TNT, you're not going to see AEW. No, you're going to get an NBA game. So we got Legato Del Fantasma versus Brazango and Swerve. We got Gargano versus Holland and Balor versus the loser Velvet. tonight, who ends up being Velveteen. Vel- Vel- Velveteen. And that's it. That's what they've announced. So, yes, the Velveteen Dream is back. It was Velveteen Dream versus Cameron Grimes versus Kushida. And... They did all the entrances. They did the big surprise return of Velveteen. They wrestle one minute. They go to commercial. They come back with eight minutes left. And it's boom, 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 boom. Big move, big move, big move. And Kushida hits Grimes with the flying arm bar. Velveteen tries a flying elbow, but he gets caught in the triangle. Then he gets caught in a Kimura. And then Grimes breaks it up with the cave-in, tosses Dream outside, pins Kushida. So because Dream didn't get pinned, he's in the three-way next week. And the, then... The, 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 the singles match. Singles match with the yes, dollar. Yes. And then afterwards, the Velveteen Dream just freaks out. And he starts stomping on Kushida. He chases the referee out of the ring. He super kicks Kushida. So I guess he has returned, and now he is a heel. That's what it looks like. Yep. All right. This whole situation is very weird. In what, in what sense? He's, healed? He's back! Yeah. That's a weird one. Um, you know, they they obviously had to look at it, and, you know, they kept him out, and then they decided to bring him back. Um, I don't have access to their investigation, and they're not going to tell us, so I don't know what more to say about the situation, other than... They must have deemed it okay in their own minds. It's also bizarre that, like, since his injury, he's not been very good in the ring. And, like, the one thing he's got is his babyface charisma. Yep. Now, now they now turn him heel. Him, now they're making him heel. Maybe they think that people are going to boo him, so they're going to use that to their advantage. But um, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the mentality. It's like, if we bring him back as a heel and then people boom, then it's like, well, that's what we want anyway. So that's cool. 